the Zerns were stopped by other Demihumans several times as they moved near Shizu and the prince in their barrels, but none of the barrels were opened and searched. In this way, the three of them reached the vicinity of the henchman demon's office. Nia and the others emerged from the barrels. They had peeked outside from within the barrels, but security had not grown tight. It would seem the prince's rescue had not yet been exposed. Nia slung the prince onto her back, and as she secured him with a rope, one of the Zern went ahead to seek an audience with the henchman demon. This was a form of reconnaissance. Once everyone had finished their preparations to barge in, the Zern returned. He's alone, no guards. Nia frowned. Now that Jeldabiat had been hurt so badly, was he as one of only three henchman demons not going to strengthen his defenses? Or had he relaxed now that the Sorcerer King was dead? As all kinds of questions swirled around in her head, the only thing that mattered was the prince's summation. That means it's the perfect opportunity to kill him. Let's go. In accordance with the prince's words, they all moved into action. One of the Zerns opened the door, and Nia who stood at the head of the group, could clearly see what was inside the room. The expensive office had a ceiling that was a full 5 meters tall, and it was very spacious. Due to its many superior furnishings, it gave off the impression of a stereotypical luxury suite. There was a black solid looking table, and behind it, a hideous monster, which spoke. Humans. Zer. It seemed to be saying something. However, they were not here to talk. The prince immediately cast a spell from Nia's back. In five elements grand fireball, a feeble flickering flame flew past Nia like it had been thrown into the room. She had heard along the way here that it was a fourth tier attack spell that was named for its attack power. It was typically the first thing thrown into a room because it would explode upon making contact with anything. However, being five elements grand fireball, the flame vanished halfway, like it had been snuffed out by the wind. I knew it. The prince muttered hatefully. He did not cast again. That spell had been an experiment. Well he had planned to press the attack if it had not been negated, unfortunately that had not been the case. Since he did not intend to waste mana, he would wait to cast spells in accordance with their attacks. Is it the Zern prince on the human's back? It doesn't look like the humans captured him and brought him here. Krihaha. <laughs> it's treason, then. Interesting. The great demon looked like it had come from a nightmare as it slowly got to his feet, like a mockery of a human being. It was completely naked, so its arms that reached down to its knees and its legs and skin and bones body, were completely exposed. Its body resembled withered wood, so slender and fragile that even Nia felt that she could break it. That withered wood body did not have a head. There was nothing but a straight line extending from shoulder to shoulder. No, there was a slender thinner than a woman's wrist branch protruding from its neck region. There were two fruits on it. Those must have been the so-called heads of this great demon. Eh. Ah. Nia could not help squeaking like that. Such was her shock that it was the only sound she could make at first. Like Shizu had said, this was the special characteristic of Circlus two heads. One of them belonged to a monstrous looking maggot. It looked very much like the prince, and given the impression of what she had heard, it was probably the grandmother. The problem was the other head. It belonged to a woman, her eyes rolled up into her head and her mouth gaping open like a fish. Her skin looked ghastly pale, but her head did not seem rotted or otherwise damaged, and her blonde hair was even gleaming. She could see bright red flesh at the plane where the head had been severed from the body, and it looked moist enough to bleed. Well the fact that the head looked like it had been freshly removed was quite mysterious, that was how she could immediately tell who it belonged to. Keller Custodio Sama. While she had only seen her from afar, there was no way she could have mistaken her for anyone else. She was the highest ranking priest of the Holy Kingdom. Confusion and doubt swirled within Nia. What was going on? Had the Zern lied? Did they think Nia and Shizu would consider fleeing if they knew it was colored? I see. I see. I see. Oh Zern, does this mean you no longer care what happens to your king and the people in that land? I'll give you one last chance. If you seize these people, I can let you off with a mild punishment. How about that? The two heads which looked like bizarre fruits did not move. Neither did those white eyeballs. They seemed like nothing more than decorations. In that case, where had that voice come from? The prince paid no heed to Nia's question, and castigated the great demon. His Zern underlings immediately moved into position to attack at any time. Hmm. What else is there to say at this point? Who believe you after you killed the king? The king? Is that so? Nia heard what seemed to be surprise in that voice. Reading that was difficult because this demon did not have a head of its own, and its expression did not change. That made it difficult to see if one's attack had been effective from the enemy's reaction. In that respect, Zerns were also troublesome opponents for humans. My duty is to rule this place. That matter was outside of my jurisdiction. I see, so it was killed. That was because your king was a fool. What? My? 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 Dear traitors, don't tell me you came merely to speak. You came here because you thought you could defeat me, no. In that case what is your trump card? That human. 
A finger raised itself, tipped with a claw that should have been over 60 centimeters long. It pointed at me. As if I'd tell you. The great demon calmly responded to the prince's outburst. You don't have to, shadow demons. The great demon's shadow stretched out in a sliding motion. It swelled up, going from a flat plane to three-dimensional. It looked like the commonly spoken image of a demon, but dyed completely black. And there were two of them. That was probably why it did not have the Mihuman guards by its side. Kill all the Zern other than the prince. I will seize the prince. Human, if you betray them, I can spare the people in the camps who are valuable to you, up to the number of fingers on two hands. The great demon had made the same proposal Shizu had expected it to. As Nia filled with respect from Shizu's keen insight, she decided to reply in order to make it careless. Really? After she carefully asked her question, she could hear joy in the demon's voice. What are you saying? Are you betraying us? The prince shouted from Nia's back, and so the great demon's attention was completely focused on Nia. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I'm talking to her. I am a being of my word. Tell me how many people you want to protect and help. If the fingers on two hands are not enough, we can continue discussions. The defenseless demon seemed to have forgotten the meaning of caution, and it was full of openings. Their hidden trump card did not miss that. She leapt out of the shadow of the door and raised her spell gun. The muzzle spat fire, and the great demon grabbed its shoulder and stumbled back. Shizu had been waiting alone outside the room for the right timing to launch the surprise attack, and it signaled the start of the hostilities. The negotiations which had been intended to manipulate their opponent into carelessness, were now over. The Zernana guard sprang at the shadow demons. Shizu rushed into the room with fearsome speed, slipped past the frontliners of both sides with lightning-fast footwork, and closed in on the great demon. What? The sorcerer. No need to explain. Shizu hacked with her dagger, and the great demon parried with its claws. While she knew that there was little time for such things once the battle started, Nia vented her unhappiness on the prince behind her. What do you mean, black hair? Isn't her hair blonde? Blonde? How is that blonde? It's light black, isn't it? Eh? He did not sound like he was lying. Could it be Zern's perceived colors differently from human beings? Nia had once heard that certain species with complete dark vision could not tell colors apart, only black and white. There were also some who could not discern colors in dark places. The light in the larder was probably so those species could see what color their food was. I'll tell you later. Yin Five Elements Lightning Claw. Tisk. Yang Five Elements Lightning Claw. A stroke of electricity hurtled through the air like the swipe of a beast's talons, but it fizzled out halfway through. While there were spells like Five Elements Softened Steel which decreased defensive strength and spells like Five Elements Hardened Steel which increased attack power, as well as summoning spells like Five Elements Call the Lightning Lord, the opposition might not have negated those, and instead cast a high-tier spell upon Nia and the others. In order to avoid that, the prince simply cast attack spells, which the enemy could not ignore. In addition, he focused on using electricity element spells, which the enemy should not have been able to resist, and then he used a special ability called wood element strengthening upon them. While the demon's elementalism should have been able to protect against it, the prince's augmented spell could not be fully negated, and so it began to take minor damage. While the original grandmother could have used strengthening techniques just like the prince had, she was now nothing more than an accessory for the great demon. The demon did not possess strengthening techniques of its own, and the prince's spellcasting overpowered it. Since Shizu was taking the role of frontliner, Nia had to do her job as the rearguard. She could not simply serve as transportation for the prince in the face of such a mighty foe. She loosed an arrow from the Ultima Shooting Star Super which she held. While her shot against the main body was highly accurate, the great demon easily batted it away with his hand. Out of my way. Shock waved. Colored's face her lips moved, and she cast a second tier attack spell at Shizu. While Shizu's body lifted off the ground from an impact that was invisible to the human eye, she did not seem to have taken any damage which could have hampered her movements. Nia had expected nothing less of a difficulty rating 150 mate demon. Yin 5 elements lightning claw. Yang 5 elements lightning claw. They cast the same spells at each other again, and a feeble current of electricity surged past the demon's body. Open wounds. That counterattack was a spell that would worsen any wounds. Naturally, it was targeted at Shizu, who was being attacked by the demon's claws. All she could see was Shizu's back. However, her dexterity did not seem to have decreased. Sweat ran down Nia's back. 